right, folks. You ask, you shall receive. Today we're going to look at the old top hand. Do a little walk around tour. Uh, answer some of y'all's questions, maybe. Uh, start with the basics. This truck was originally my father's. Um, still is, actually. Probably still in his name. Um, 1979 Dodge W150. Uh, power wagon package. Uh, black on black. This one actually is kind of cool. It came with uh, uh, the factory uh, Little Red Express package minus Little Red Express or Warlock badging. Uh, it's got the, the buddy seats. Um, it came with the chrome 5 slots. Um, tough wheel. Started life as an automatic 360 two barrel. Um, it's come a long way since then. Uh, we've done a lot to it. So we'll, uh, we'll start with the interior. All right, here we go. We've got a pretty basic 79 Dodge. She's in pretty good shape. We've, uh, we've kept up the interior best we can. Seats are been recovered once. Overall holding up pretty well. Got a nice black dash all the way around. Door panels are still in place. It is basically an oven whenever in function, functional use. Uh, it, it, the exhaust pipe is approximately oh, three quarters of an inch below the floor pan. Um, and uh, if it's not trying to kill you, it's trying to cook you essentially. Got the tough wheel, complement of gauges. You don't need a radio. Pretty basic stuff. Got the sliding glass window, all the good stuff. You'll notice there's a few more sticks than you'd probably find in most trucks. This one has a four-speed transmission. Uh, we've got a, a NP203-205 doubler set up in this thing with twin sticks. Um, makes it real easy to come in and out of four-wheel drive when you're on the trail. This rig has uh, lockers front and rear and it basically likes to go in a straight line uh, well, whenever you come up on a, a tight turn you can just slide this little guy in and out and two-wheel drive real easy um, the transmission in this vehicle is a NP 445 close ratio four speed pretty hard to find unit it took me a long time to find one um, found it out of a junkyard in Colorado probably 20 years ago um, and uh, basically filled it up with oil put it in the truck <laughs> and she's been doing good ever since all right so starting at the front of the truck here uh, it's not exactly stock as you can see um, we've uh, built some bumpers for this truck Got a birdbath 75 77 model hood i believe power wagon emblems these fenders were off of a i believe a 75 three quarter ton it was a little rotten and so we were able to kind of do some a little trimming tastefully to keep tires from completely tearing this sucker up uh, this bumper is uh leave six by six square tubing is what it started as whole lot of grinding whole lot of welding uh, very overkill uh, those are those are your they'll, they'll hear you coming if they don't see you <laughs> around the side here we've definitely got a little trail rash on this old girl she's seen some fair share of bumps and bruises passenger side always gets the brunt of you know a little bit of rock rash coming in and out of the gullies this uh, bed was an eBay score about 20 years ago and you could still find good prices on cool old stuff the came to me on a pallet $27 plus shipping uh, disassembled obviously uh, and it, it's believed to be, I believe it's a late 40s to early 50s model bed. 
Uh, it's approximately two to four inches, three, four inches narrower, I think, than a uh, typical bed on a, a 70s model would be, uh, which is nice because, as you see, the fenders tuck in real nicely. See some more trail damage there. <laughs> uh, don't worry, these fenders are as full of Bondo as just about you can ever possibly imagine. Beat them out with a hammer on a on a slick rock in the driveway 20 years ago and well this little spot right here is kind of a recent addition <laughs> that's why we stay out of the mud holes so anyway the bed houses a number of things that make this a reality we've got a vintage spare tire might look here that's the same tire that eric runs on the old death charger We've got two jerry cans, and we've got a winch mount. Toolbox for supplies that typically you never need, and you always have what you don't need, never what you need. we got a fuel cell relocated, this 18 gallon fuel cell relocated to the bed. Uh, got rid of a lot of underhang on the bottom of the truck. Opened up a lot of room for the exhaust system and whatnot. You'll notice there's a couple little Easter eggs. That is a Camaro gas cap. Y'all know what I mean. The bumper, again, fabricated. This one was 4x4 tubing. Uh, it's kind of unique in that it actually sandwiches into a repurposed receiver hitch to tie the frame rails completely together in the back. Eliminates a lot of flexing of the frame and uh, overall you know, if you fall down on some rock, you're not going to crush the uh, Camaro exhaust tips. Yep. So our rear axle is actually from around a 2001 to 2002 Dodge 2500 pickup. Uh, Dana 60. Quite a bit heavier uh, axle tubes than uh, standard older model Dana 60 would have had. It's actually essentially a Dana 70 housing uh, with 60 guts in it. Uh, 513 gears. It's got a uh, essentially a, a Detroit locker. I believe it's the Yukon branded one. I forget the name at the moment. Um, been upgraded to 35 spline axle shafts from a Dana 80 uh, second gen axle. Direct fit uh, for these. Holding everything up we've got Wait for it, Chevy parts. 56 inch, four inch lift springs, I believe, uh, from Procomp. And uh, they do quite a good job. This one over here, she's a little sad. Yeah, it's about time for some new springs back here, actually. Uh, it's been putting a beating on it. Kind of get an idea of the exhaust and see our resonators there just after the muffler and again our wonderful repurposed Camaro tips so up front on the old top hand we've got a Dana 60 this one is 92 93 vintage uh, outfitted with the same 513 gears lunchbox locker you just saw Duddy install one on his death charger. They work real good. Um, this one did uh, sustain some damage a few years ago. Had to do pretty much a complete rebuild on it. Uh, exploded three out of the four axle shafts. All that stuff got replaced with uh, chromoly good stuff. 35 spline inner and outers. Uh, bomb proof U joints. Uh, let's go with it. We got some real nice Yukon hubs. You never want to have to take those apart. They're quite a bitch to put together. For steering, we've got off-road design crossover high steer with a PSC hydraulic assist unit. It's, it's kind of interesting how that all works. Ties in to the steering gear there. Suspension's pretty simple, six inch rough country, uh, jungle hangers front and rear, and uh, a 
overall real good setup. We have not been able to explode this one yet. So I know the question all y'all are asking, what powers this beast? Well, let me tell you, it is the most bastardized Mopar engine that you can put together and reliably beat on for hours and hours. Never overheats, has good oil pressure, just works. Um, which motor would you think that would be? Well, it's not a 360 that came with this truck, I can assure you. Damn sure isn't a big block because all those suckers will overheat and anything, um, especially on the trails we run. This sucker has a 318 uh, outfitted with some magnum cylinder heads, uh, pretty mild comp cam. I put this motor together oh, about 15 years ago. It's been dead reliable. It's been through a couple of iterations, a um, couple of different sets of cylinder heads. Finally settled on the magnum heads. It, it really cleaned up the whole accessory drive, got rid of the V-belts, um, and an easy 20, 40 horsepower over what I had on there, which was some very iffily machined 360 heads that, well, let's just say it took about a tube of Pookie to get the intake manifold to seal, so that didn't work out very well. So let's take a look under the hood. All right, guys, here we have it. 318, this one is a mid-80s uh, flat tappet cam motor, uh, set of aftermarket magnum heads on it, have the thicker decks, avoid cracking. I uh, believe it's a Chinesium crosswind intake, uh, topped with a Summit EFI setup. Pretty similar to a Fitec unit, uh, aside from the fact that just a different throttle body and the computer mounts remotely. Um, powering the ignition system, got a uh, Pertronix uh, distributor in it, uh, running a, oh, what do you call it? it would be a second gen style remote coil, NGK plugs of course, because why would you want anything else in your Mopar? Don't say champions, they're junk. Uh, I've got a upgraded the brake system on this sucker using the uh, smaller big block style brake booster with a Wellwood master cylinder and proportioning valve. Excellent stuff if you're ever doing hot rod Mopars, bolts right up, works really good. Aluminum radiator, uh, Champion, uh, I believe this unit was for a mid-70s Challenger, actually. It's a pretty much a direct fit, just drill some holes. Uh, cold air intake, yes, custom, only not custom. Some of you may recognize this. Regular Dodge truck stuff. Maybe Durango. I think the air box is maybe from a Durango. And, uh, you know, keeps the air filter a little cleaner. Gives it a little, a little more fresh air out of this fender. And then you've got the elephant in the room over here. Is what in the hell is going on with this wiring? Well, it's previous Dodge owner wiring that was, well, I'm the previous owner and we had to fix all this, and this truck has a lot of accessories on it. Uh, it's got a high amp alternator, uh, electric fans. We've got the batteries actually mounted in the bed. We have remote winch hookups front and rear. Um, headlights are on relays, things of that nature. It makes it so it doesn't burn down. Power steering, PSC goodness, remote reservoir and pump with a cooler right in front of the radiator with a nice fan on it. Keeps those temps down on those hard trail days. Long tube headers, two and a half inch dual exhaust. I think we got some thrush mufflers on there, the two chambers, and a, uh, a set of resonators after that to quiet the noise down a little bit. The, the thrush two chambers were just a little bit excessive. So we'll do a start up here and a rev for you guys. but. That's what powers this beast. Very simple, reliable, and you know, my estimate, I'd say around 250 to 275 horse. Um, not a whole bunch of torque at the bottom end of the range, but it basically sticks around 2,500 to 3,000 RPMs 
uh, and it makes all the torque you need with 513 gears and you know all the all the low range guys i hope that covers all your questions any further ones just let me know in the comments um we've got, got a few other trucks we'd cover here maybe next year we'll see uh, for some reason there's 71 of y'all that are already subscribed with one crappy video so maybe we'll get some more maybe we won't as always make sure you bother duddy and never let up that guy needs all the help he can get and um until next time, keep it easy. Where's your fat brother? Huh? Where's your fat brother Magnum at? You don't even know, huh? Kitty. What are you doing? Chilling on the top hand, huh?